Hey, Haytham, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Jesse? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. So listen, I've got a new project and I think I needed a CSS's help on it. So I requested a precision engagement in order to get you involved on this. What's going on? I'm glad to help. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what's going on is I'm starting a new DNA expansion project. As you already know, we've got DNA installed and managing our headquarters locations, but I want to expand it out and add in a couple of branch locations. And here's where the problem is. These locations, they've got some legacy devices, mostly 2960s and some 3850 switches. So what I was hoping to get your help with is maybe some help planning out the process and really getting an idea of any of the prerequisites I'm going to need in order to deploy this out to these branch sites. You think this is something you can help me with? Yeah, of course. And we're here to help you with that. And we get that question from a lot of different customers. And it's important that you plan this properly in order to avoid any kind of obstacles and have a smooth migration. Uh, so uh, let me start first by sharing some slides in order to discuss what are the prerequisites and the things that you need to make sure that uh, that is planned properly before you start your migration. Give me a second to share my screen. So the first thing that you need to do and make sure of, you first, you need to collect your inventory and start doing infrastructure readiness assessment. And this consists of three pillars and three factors that you need to plan for it. So first thing is, is your hardware is compatible with DNA center? And the second point is your software is compatible with your DNA center or it does need an upgrade for the software. And the third thing is what is your business intent? and is your hardware and license would provide you the business intent and the business outcome that you are, that you are seeking in order to, to uh, do it with DNA Center. So this is the first thing uh, that you need to assess. All right. Well, that uh, easily brings me to my first question. Um, I know that the hardware and software compatibility is different for different versions of DNA Center. I, I don't know where to go to actually find that information. So let's start there. What's the compatibility yeah. look like? So the first thing that you need to do after collecting all that uh, infrastructure information and inventory, you need to go to the compatibility matrix link that is displayed here on the PowerPoint. So let me open that. So when you open the compatibility information, there are three different compatibility matrices that we have. First one is for the DNA center compatibility, which is the basic assurance and automation features. Second one is for software defined access when you have DNA center in your fabric part of it, the SDA solution. And the third thing is the prime uh, uh, infrastructure uh, where you are migrating from prime towards DNA center and you need information about the legacy devices and the support level that you will get when you move it to them to the DNA center. So I believe we are focused only on DNA center automation and assurance features. Am I correct? That's right. At this time, just straight automation and assurance. Okay, great. So I'll open the first one. Now you'll get the compatibility matrix for DNA center. Uh, what is the software version that you're running? Uh, you've actually already got it up on the screen. Uh, we're running okay. 2233. So the first thing that you need to select your software just be aware that we always publish recommended release. I need you to always like check what is the recommended release. And this, the best practice is to upgrade to the recommended release that is mentioned in the uh, public documentation that we have in order to avoid any kind of uh, bugs and have the latest patch with, with all the fixes. And then the second thing is you select what device are you seeking to check the compatibility for. Is it a switch? Is it a wireless device? Is it a router? Whatever you, you, the thing that you're uh, uh, interested in. So I chose the switch and then you select, are you checking all the applications or certain applications that you need to check from a DNA center perspective? So I'm selecting all the services and all functionality of the DNA center. And then I submit the query. Then I'll get this nice table with all the device and platform IDs along with the recommended software version that is compatible with DNA Center, along with the uh, uh, compatible, different compatible releases uh, from the minimum to the uh, recommended one. And you will have the uh, uh, view for the licenses that is supported by those devices, whether it's essential license, advantage license, and the different applications uh, that you will access uh, via DNA Center. 
So just be aware and you put in mind there are some legacy devices. It will only support the essentials license. As you can see here, it doesn't support the advantage license. So that's why I mentioned you need to be clear about your business intent before selecting is that device is going to serve your purpose and will provide you with all the functionalities that you desire from DNA Center or you need to upgrade to a higher tier or higher platform that supports that type of functionality. So that's an, uh, an option, the competitive matrix. Let's go back to the PowerPoint slides. So this is an example of the inventory that I've collected for one of my customers. As you can see, we just stated here the different switches that we have, the quantity, the platform type, and then we mentioned what is the business intent. Do I need it to be a DNA center only functionality or I need it to be part of the software defined access? We, we have an, a column for the software version that is currently running. What is the minimum software from a DNA center perspective? What is the recommended software version from a DNA center perspective? Then we have all the analysis in the right hand corner of, of the file. Uh, so this device doesn't need to, does it require a software upgrade? Uh, what licenses that it's supporting. So uh, for the 9300, it supports both essential and advantage and it meets our intent. So I don't need to replace the hardware. If you go to the second point for the 2960 that I have, I had for my customer, as you can see, essentials license doesn't support software defined access. You need only to have uh, um, uh, an advantage license in order to support software defined access. However, like the software versions are meeting the criteria for, for the DNA center in terms of software. So based on that decision, you will put in mind, do I need to upgrade that switch? Is it meeting the criteria? Is the license level meeting that criteria? And based on that, I will plan for my migration. So unfortunately, my 2960s, I know at least some of them are not running the, the uh, minimum compatible version. Uh, What's the best way of doing the software upgrades for this is what's it look like yeah i know that that's a hectic process um unfortunately i recommend you that you upgrade uh before discovering the device and managing the dna center that's the cisco best practices uh, we don't use dna center to upgrade uh, the old incompatible release to a newer one so that needs to be done in a manual way um, there are different options, like you can go and, and upload the, your image using SFTP, TFTP, whatever that uh, um, uh, is, is supported by your product. And you have the different configuration guides that tells you step by step what exactly the CLIs that it's required in order to have this smooth upgrade. So okay. uh, I hope that answers your question. And <laughs> I know that's, that's a hectic exercise, but this is the best practice. But in the future, once I hit at least the minimum supported version, if I need to do any other software upgrades in the future, those I'm going to be able to do via DNA Center, right? Exactly. Okay, that's that's perfect. That'll work just fine for me. So now that we've got hardware and I know how to do the, the software upgrades, I'll be fine with. You did mention the feature sets and a couple of different license levels. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? What am I going to be actually looking at there? Yeah, sure. So let's first have a view uh, to understand an overview about the different license uh, that we have. So license, the new way of smart licensing is composed of two components. First one is perpetual, which is the networking stack. And this is all the layer two and layer three functionality and it's tied to your device hardware. It doesn't need any kind of subscription. It's a lifetime perpetual license. The second uh, tier is the DNA add-on tier, which is subscription. And this is allows you to access anything that is related to the controller based functionality using DNA Center. So, uh, uh, and, and access all the innovations uh, from this centralized controller. And we have two, two types or two tiers. We have the essentials and we have the advantage. So uh, the essentials will provide you uh, for the DNA add-on will provide you uh, only the basic functionality in terms of automation and assurance. Whether the uh, advantage, it provides you more uh, insights and more enhanced visibility on your infrastructure and more uh, advanced use cases. So in order to assess that better and understand all the different feature set, uh, there is a public link uh, for the software subscription matrix. I'll just open it to you. 
So that's an example for the switching. We have the same for the wireless and for the routing. As you can see here, the different representations. Uh, the first one is the perpetual network essentials and network advantage. And this is the different feature sets between uh, 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 both of them in terms of support. And as I mentioned, this is perpetual license and it's tied to your device hardware. And then we have the add-on features. As you can see here, the DNA essentials will provide you some basic uh, assurance and automation capabilities. And if you hover the mouse, uh, mouse over any of those features, you will get an exact description. What does that mean? So like overall health and assurance, basic assurance features will provide you a high level overview in terms of the uh, health of your network from a device or client uh, aspect. If you go to the advanced features, and I compared one of those features is the AI network analytics. So you get more advanced assurance features. You get more deeper insights, you more enhanced view about the client 360, user 360 uh, devices and application level. You go and get more contextual data to assess the performance of your network. Besides that, I just needed to, to uh, point that out. Uh, you'd have embedded uh, other embedded services and integrations with other solutions. Uh, like here, you have access to a DNA spaces, which is location-based services. Uh, so you have also, you're entitled to use that. And for Thousand Eyes, um, you can uh, integrate with Thousand Eyes and start running tests on your uh, catalyst switches uh, and, and assess the application performance uh, uh, inside your network. So uh, this is how you assess the different feature set and uh, map it to the proper license. So okay. getting back to the slide deck. Yeah, so I get that. Um, now, as I said, I've, I've got my 2960s and my 3850s, and they already have licensing on them, of course. Um, how, how does that map to the new licensing model? Am I going to need to be purchasing some more licenses? Okay, that takes us to the other step. So, as I mentioned, uh, for the license overview, we had the perpetual part and we had the DNA add-on part. So, as you can see for the legacy devices, you would retain your old perpetual license that you had before, which is IP services, IP based, LAN based on your 3850 and 2960. But on top of that, in order to access and start utilizing the DNA center features, you need to purchase DNA add-on licenses. So and in a nutshell, you need to have those DNA add-on licenses submitted under your smart account pool of licenses. As long as you have all those uh, uh, licensing um, uh, account under your pool, you're entitled to use it with DNA Center. And to take it further, like an example for that, just sorry, um, uh, like if I need to have the advantage license for assurance features or software defined access, you here, like for the Catalyst uh, uh, 9K switches, you need the network advantage license and an add-on license, which is the DNA center license. For the uh, 3850 and legacy devices, you will have your IP base, which is retained and, and the IP services. And on top of that, you'll have the DNA advantage license in order to start utilizing those uh, switches as part of SDA or utilize it with the advanced DNA center features. So to answer the other part, as I explained, and in a nutshell, you need to have those licenses and such a smart account. Um, in terms of pricing, uh, this bit differs. Uh, uh, there are some promotions or discounts and offer uh, that you need to consult with your account team. And I have taken a screenshot uh, from a public document, which is the license portability options and migrations options. So depending on your uh, software support contract that you have and the perpetual license like Cisco One uh, perpetual customers, they might be entitled for uh, a credit back or a discount and, and such offering. So it's better to assess that with your account team to understand what is kind of, what are the different uh, contracts that you have and whether you're entitled to have any kind of promotion and discounts. Okay. So that, yeah, I hope that clears the uh, that point. It definitely does. So uh, I know I'm going to need to talk to my accounting, but really quick, what's this conversion process going to look like? Is it? Can you give me an overview? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the old licensing model that we used to have is 
uh, on legacy devices is right to use or product activation keys and it was uh, locked on the node now we're shifting towards smart licensing um, it's easier to manage and uh, uh, faster to to uh, you can transfer between the different nodes um, and as you can see here in the screenshot that i have depending on the platform type uh, there are some uh, licenses like they can use the legacy one and they have and use also the smart license which is called the hybrid and we have the uh, some devices and platforms that use only smart only uh, uh, licensing and this uh, differs depending on the software image that you run on the platform and the hard type, hardware type that you have it so you need to check the different products that you have and the configuration guide in order to assess which type of license and how you do the conversion for those type of devices. So to go deeper, um, depending on that configuration guide, you now started to understand like the 3850, it starts to use the license from a version, smart licensing only from version 1691, and you're moving and upgrading from an old uh, version to a newer version. And now you need to plan how to to start activating the smart licensing for the 3850. There are different approaches that you can uh, follow in order to do that. Two of them are self-service, which is done by a CLI first one, which is called device that conversion. And the second one, you can do it from your uh, smart software uh, manager tool or the license registration portal uh, that you have. So this is another uh, uh, option that you could follow and you need, you can transform those uh, legacy licenses to the new smart licensing. The third option is you get the help from Cisco and they can do it for you on your behalf, which is the Cisco Global Licensing Operation Team. You can open a case for them at any time and they would just convert those licenses automatically for you. So I think that we made it easier for everyone uh, uh, so they can follow the different uh, path and the different ways that they are comfortable with. And we're trying to make it easy for everyone. Yeah, no, this seems really good. And I really like the flexibility of having a couple of different options. I think I, think I wanna stop here. Um, I wanna reach out to my account team, make sure I get my licensing sorted out, make sure they're all in my uh, smart account and and after that I'm definitely going to want to circle back with you and actually go through this and see how to do it from a more practical perspective but thank you very much for your time I think this is extremely helpful thank you so much Jesse and I hope that we have another follow-up session after you do those discussions and we can go forward uh, go deeper in that and have like demos uh, in order to start learning how to to do that thank you definitely thank you Thank <music> you.